Shalom, Shalom. Greetings. The Gospel. The Evangelion. The Good News. You know, there are not enough words to uh, explain what the good news is. We don't have enough words. But we bless the Lord because we have the good news. And the good news is a person, the person of Jesus Christ. And when we talk about the person of Jesus Christ, we're not talking about a single individual man. Because when you talk about Christ, you know, in the class of one man who represented all, for example, Adam, the first man, the Bible teaches us that Christ is the second man. So when you talk about Christ, we're talking about all humanity summed, assumed in one man. And uh, so the person of Jesus Christ means a lot. Understanding Christ Jesus is understanding yourself because you are already assumed in him. For example, before Jesus Christ came, all men were assumed or encapsulated in one man, Adam. So if you wanted to know what is going on with your life or what is supposed to go on with your life, you looked at Adam, you had to know who Adam was. And so you will give explanation of, of what is going on. Whatever happened to him was now the experience of humanity. So we have Jesus Christ, the second man, and the last Adam. Of course, we have to realize that what happens to him right now, the Bible says, as he is, so are we, realizing that that's what we derive our present day experiences or what we're supposed to be today. So when you're talking about the person of Jesus Christ, we're talking about one man who has assumed all men. It's not an ordinary person that we're talking about. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So we are blessed once again to have this opportunity to share with us again this beautiful message, this wonderful message of the gospel, the message of all time that reveals uh -huh, that person of Jesus Christ, that person in whom all humanity have, is found. And understand why that? Why did God place all humanity in one person? And so that we may be found in him and if we may be redefined in him so man can only be redefined in that one you cannot be redefined or define yourself out of him in fact it is impossible to define man out of that one christ jesus so man has his definition in this person now that is why if you know yourself out of him for whatever reason then you know nothing about you and you know nothing about anybody. Paul teaches us that we should stop seeing or considering or looking at those uh, other people according to the flesh. See? See, if you are seeing things or people according to the flesh, it's a wrong perception. So we've got to be healed from that and that's salvation. Glory to God. So we are, we are assumed in the person of Jesus Christ and that makes the difference. I wonder what we learn and what we've been exposed to all this, art, all this time. Jesus Christ is enough, I'm telling you, beyond the words I may use or anybody else will use. Glory to God. Romans chapter 7, chapter 8, verse 27, it says, and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit, the mind of the spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Now, based on the spirit's unuttered, unuttered articulations with the Father, the Father through the Spirit gives us utterance to the believe, give us, gives utterance to the believer. I want you to understand that the word he maketh intercession according to the will of God is italicized 
in uh, King James Version. The will of, the will of. So the will of, if it is italicized, it means in the original King James Version, where if a word that is italicized means were not supposed to be there, they were added. It was added by the translators. So this verse really says, He maketh or makes in the session according to God. Not according to the will of God. No, according to God. What does this mean? It, in other words, the believer in giving utterance to the unuttered articulations between the Spirit and the Father is praying the same way God would pray if he prayed about the situation. This is how deep it is. When the Spirit of God has taken over and he's helping us in our prayers, he's not, he's not only praying according to the will of God. No. He's praying as God himself would pray if he's praying for a certain matter. So when the Spirit of God helps us, it's God himself helping us. It is God himself praying in us. Think about it. Oh, what a blessing. That's how it is. And that's how deep it is. So the Holy Spirit helping us means God himself helping us. Oh my goodness. You know, something is... I always think about the love of God and I'm like, oh my goodness. What, what manner of love is this? What kind of love is this? So he's stooping down. And instead of leaving us do what we're supposed to do, he comes and he joins us. And he does it. As he would do it, of course, if he was facing a certain circumstances. And yet he does it with us or through us. At times we don't even realize he's the one who's doing it, doing it through us. And circumstances responds or succumbs or bows down. And we think, oh, we did it, we did it as if we did it ourselves or on our own. You see, this goes to show us how deep God wants us to be one with him or acknowledge our union with him. Put it also, our oneness with him. This is the importance of the Spirit of God in us. It means God himself. So through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, we are connected to the mind of the Godhead in a supernatural manner. This joint operation of our attempt to pray and his assistance with his unutterable articulations that we express in words beyond articulate speech is part of the human divine partnership in prayer. Think about this divine partnership of prayer. That means humanity and divinity in one, in one flow. So as humanity is praying, divinity is joining, and all of a sudden, nothing can resist. Glory to God. This is God's policy in action. Let me ask this question. If this is the case, and we grow in the acknowledgement of who, what the Spirit of God is doing and who is in our lives, do you think we will not achieve or attain this experience of the redemption of our bodies? It's so easy this way. This is the plan of God. It's the policy of God. It's how we wanted it. You see? Very, very important. All glory. Oh, glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So our supernatural prayer life, enabled by the Holy Spirit, is illustrated by something we might call a heavenly law firm with us as clients. It has a heavenly branch presided over by the Lord Jesus Christ and an earthly branch directed by the Holy Spirit. Each of the human of them pleads for us before the Father in the supreme court of heaven 
these are just words to kind of elaborate what we're talking about here, but it's much deeper than that. In fact, at times when you give examples, they might mislead those who are listening or hearing because they picture, paint pictures, uh, you know, portray pictures in their minds which are not necessarily accurate. So it is the Spirit's role to move us to pray and we intensify that prayer to a point of which we ourselves are not capable. So similarly, it is the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven to interpret our prayers. Alright, and plead the efficacy of this is an answer is answered prayer guaranteed. This should give us great boldness in prayer and should encourage us to pray in the spirit with great confidence. If it is true that the God, that the Spirit of God, who is God Himself, is actually taking over helping us in our prayers, so that we may not have any limitations in terms of how to articulate what we want to articulate, or saying the wrong stuff, or speaking the wrong things, or addressing the wrong things, and rather He creates this desire, enablement, power, energies, and so the words that are appropriate will be used, and we get results. This is the best thing then because it's easier than to join in prayer because we know we are not the ones who are going to do it. He's the one who's going to do it in us or through us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So we can do this together with him. What a partnership. And do you know that this was the will of God from the beginning that he didn't want us to be separated from him and he didn't want to be separated from us? And he's not testing us, putting us to test so that we may fail or win or so that he say, oh, oh. No. He's with us all the way long. You see, the way he was with Jesus Christ and his earthly ministry never left him. He enabled him to do everything he did. Well, Samuel is with us today, walking with us, talking with us, moving us, enabling us empowering us, encouraging us. The Holy Spirit is God in our lives. And with Him and acknowledging Him, we realize we are meant to succeed. And if we fail, it won't be because the Holy Spirit has not helped. It's because we have failed to acknowledge the Spirit of God in our lives as a sign of the love of God beyond measure. Let us acknowledge the Holy Spirit once again in our lives. Shalom, shalom.